When the Fortuna update first hit Warframe, kit guns were an instant smash success. Everybody loved them. Except the gays, that is. The gays quickly became the black sheep of the bunch, simply because it was that weak, and even though it was buffed later on, it couldn't really escape that stigma. The primary version of the gays, however, well, this one is a different story altogether. Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this primary weapon. I got a couple of builds lined up, something cheap, something affordable, something that most players should be able to build, but of course we also have the quote-unquote endgame setup for Riven. Even though I'm not really sure it's an endgame setup anymore, considering that Riven disposition for brand new weapons is set at a measly 1 out of 5. That said though, please keep in mind that my building guides usually take a new player friendly approach. There's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the gaze. But before all that, this video is brought to you by me and all the fantastic people that choose to support the content. Thank you guys so much. Want to get access to fantastic perks such as loyalty badges, custom wallpapers and the option to vote on what I work on next? That's how this review happened by the way. Check the link in the cards right now or click on the join button which is next to the subscription button. You can support the channel via Patreon, YouTube membership or even Twitch subs. Links are in the description down below. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. Now I'm gonna try to get this done in a single take my friend, no cuts and I'm gonna leave in all the bloopers and all the mistakes as well. So let's see how bad can this one actually get. The gaze primary from my subjective point of view is a fair bit more interesting than the secondary version. And don't misunderstand, this is still a beam weapon so if you fancy yourself a beam weapon you're gonna be loving this one. The interesting part is that at the end of the beam, Okay, so at the edge of the range or upon the point of contact, you're going to be getting a free meter range AoE, which is absolutely fantastic. Of course, you're going to be damaging down all nearby targets. Now, let's talk about how to build this particular kit gun anyway. So you got your gaze, right? And then you got to decide what kind of grip you're going to be going for. I'm going to recommend two. It's a compromise between the two. We're going to be talking about the Tremor and we're going to be talking about the Brash. What you're going to be seeing me using today is going to be the Tremor with Splat. You can go with Splat or Killstream when it comes to the loader. Same critical chance, same critical damage, just a higher or lower magazine and a faster or slower reload time. You get it? I'm going to show you that when we look at stats. Now here's the deal between these two groups because again the groups is what is important right now. The Tremor has only 18 meters total range, that includes the 3 meter wide AoE. But the Brash has 33 meters, fantastic, right? And you're gonna say, okay, why didn't you go for Brash? A lot more range, right? Well, this one has 18 meters, which from my subjective point of view is more than enough. As you can see, I'm still fully able to damage down these targets and it deals about 27 point something or 26-27% more damage. Now that's huge considering its base values, right? So everything will get amplified. That's the choice you gotta make. Do you want less damage and more range? A lot more range? You go for the Brash. You want a bigger punch and 17-18 meters is enough for you? You go for the Tremor. My recommendation is Tremor. Now this being a beam weapon, there's also a couple of additional details. You're gonna be getting two damage ticks per each and every single ammo, so that means two sources of potentially applying a proc or multiple procs if you're going over 100% status chance. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it. Let's check them stats. But mod capacity 60 out of 60. And if your gaze says only 30 out of 30, jump into actions and plug in the Auto King Catalyst, doubling your mod capacity. Now you can grind this one from Nightwave, you can pay 20 plat to have one installed, and you can also get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie. My weapon has been formatted a total of six times because. That's not important, why? What is important is that for the build, I'm recommending you guys free format should be more than enough. When you guild your weapon, you're gonna be getting to choose one polarity, go V, and then plug in three more V symbols and you should be good to go. When it comes to the arcane, honestly, it doesn't really matter all that much like it once used to. When Pax Seeker first came out, it was amazingly strong, super powerful and all whatnot. And still, if you want a bit more deeps, you go with Pax Seeker. But if you don't want to worry about ammo anymore, you simply go with Pax Charge, especially if you want to build super heavy duty into fire rate, for example. 
Here's something that I do regret, my friends. I regret unlocking the Excel slot on this one. What am I gonna use, huh? Honestly, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna say, hey, Vigilante Supplies, I can get the bonus from the Sentinel, you know that. And I don't need the ammo restores anyway because I can drop a pad, for example. Or I can use Carrier with ammo case. Honestly, I don't know. More zoom because that's what you always wanted. And of course not. Don't be silly. Accuracy 100, which is fantastic, my friends, because Heavy Caliber works on this one magnificently well, and I do recommend it on the Gaze Primary. Critical chance, critical damage. 39% with 2.3x, which is absolutely fantastic. And again, if you go with Splat or Killstream, you're still gonna be looking at 39 with 2.3. Absolutely beautiful. Fire rate of 8 with a magazine of 43. Multi shot of 1, noise alarming. Reload of 1.7 seconds. Now, if you want a reload of 1.3 seconds, but a smaller magazine, you swap out Splat for Killstream when you build your gun. Riven Disposition, 1 out of 5. I know, it's sad, it's okay if you wanna cry in the comment section down below. I'll join you, I'll start the crying if that's alright with everybody. I understand the reasons why brand new weapons in Warframe have Riven Disposition of 1 out of 5. They are very good reasons, but again, I feel sad every time I see one little ball out of five little balls. Any man would want to see at least two balls. That's not important. Status chance of 17% trigger held, of course, and the damage by default is gonna be radiation. Now, you see 37 there, right? Mm. If you go with Brash and you get that extra range, you're looking at only 29, all right? That's the compromise that you're forced to make. It's really up to you. Now, with that out of the way, let's jump into a standard build. And we got the Magic Serration, Multi-Shot with Split Chamber, Critical Chance, Critical Damage combo between Point Strike, Vital Sense, and of course, Hunter Mumu had to be here as well. And of course, the Vital Elemental combo between the two 60-60 mods, Rhyme Rounds that you get by doing Spy Missions, and Malignant Force that you get from Corrupted Vor in the Void. Now, there's still one more mod slot left on the weapon. Actually, two of them, but when it comes to the Excellus mod slot, as I said before, I would not recommend you waste the plateau or resources in unlocking this one. You can go with Heavy Caliber in the final one. Honestly, this will provide a huge DPS increase. You want more crit? You like orange crits, right? Because... Because why not at the end of the day you can go with something like Argon Scope, you can go with more multi shot It honestly depends on you what you want to go for in the final mod slot You can even go with some fire rate, but considering the magazine of only 33 I would not necessarily force it with fire rate You can try something like speed trigger or perhaps something like vile acceleration You can even go with firestorm if you want to increase the range of the AOE from my humble point of view It's not really worth it and again, I would recommend you try heavy calibre on this one. So we got radiation viral, then we're gonna be switching it up to corrosive radiation, because why not? Level 120 corrupted heavy goons as per the usual, and this time, let me make sure that Nova doesn't have any power, uh, that's fine, 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 sure. Nothing will affect our test results, in this case, at the very least. So we're gonna be shooting it from roughly here, I'm not gonna try to make most use out of my AoE, but as you can see, this one, my friends, is a full-blown monster, and it's area of effect damage, I can aim like so etc etc now of course you can also go with corrosive i prefer weapons with corrosive even though that from a dps perspective they're not as powerful you're still gonna be getting more instant damage i don't enjoy in normal missions like hitting a target running behind a corner then waiting for it to bleed out it feels it, it feels weird it feels like dastardly and muttly in their flying machines if you guys ever saw something of the store so let's try with corrosive as you saw the weapon does pack a serious punch so have no worries it does hurt quite badly i might add on the enemies that is so electricity we're gonna go with high voltage this one is farmed from the mission na elgar planet Eris. find all the free secret caches then upon extraction a five percent chance at getting this one or uh, shell shock. You need both of them, so if you see battle, bring them. And by the way, battle is this week, the week of publication. You should grab all the 6060 electricity mods. Now, we're not going to be using Hunter Munitions on this one simply because I don't think it's worth at this point in time. If I don't have Valor on the weapon, I'm not going to get something to increase the value of those slash ticks. So we're going to go with more corrosive, more damage, and more crit with Argon Scope, at least this time. My critical chance, as it is, I think will go over 150%, 150-160, something along those lines. And now, basically, the weapon is a full-blown grenier-destroying machine, because you got corrosive, which will deal 
uh, extra damage versus ferrite armor, but you also got radiation, which will be taking care of any bombard. You get how that one works, right? Alloy armor and ferrite armor. More details on the wiki, of course. So you can go for a corrosive setup on this one. Honestly, I'm enjoying the gaze a whole lot more than I thought I would be. So I like the gaze and the tomb finger overall. I think these are really, really worth building. Of course, we can also talk about Rivens, my friends. For the record, I do not recommend Rivens for Dispo 1 weapons because you're gonna need a super awesome roll to make it slottable on the weapon because of the low amount of stats for Dispo 1. Take a look at this one. It's not mine, it's a loner from a friend. It's a critican. Multi shot, crit chance with plus weapon recoil. Of course, in this case, that uh, negative is 100% harmless. It will not affect the handling of the weapon. So we're gonna test it out like so with corrosive, okay? Enough of viral and hunter munitions. Honestly, that's enough. Let's go with a good old fashioned corrosive. Uh, should we pump up? No, we're gonna pump up the level just a tad later. Still with level 150. And yes, a Dispo 1 Riven, even a Dispo 1 will make a big impact on the weapon if it's rolled really, really well. A uh, Super Saiyan roll, okay, or a Godly roll or something along those lines. But again, Riven such as these will be costing a fair amount of plat, even if it is Dispo of only 1 out of 5. And of course, my friends, there's still one thing that we do gotta do, bump up everything with Warframe buffs, and for that we're gonna be using the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime and her fantastic buffs. Now, you should go with Corrosive Projection, blah blah, yada yada, you know the story, go with Corrosive Projection, but if your build calls for something like uh, Loot Detector, Rejuvenashu, I don't know, Energy Siphon, or anything of the sort, just forget about Corrosive Projection, of course you can also use Rifle Amp for basically any primary. I'm fully aware that it says Rifle Damage Increase, but it's basically Primary Damage Increase. When it comes to the Arcanes, we can go for something like Arcane Rage. Not a bad choice, not bad at all. And this one will increase primary damage by 180%. It's a headshot chance 15% more than enough, especially considering that you do have that AoE. As for a second arcane, we're gonna be going with Arcane Avenger R5. Again, this is probably the most powerful offensive arcane in Warframe. It will grant its bonus to your primary weapon secondary and to your melee as well. It's a bonus additive after effect, so it simply stacks on top of what you already have. Those two arcanes can be farmed from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. Okay, now we're gonna bump up the level to 150, like Sue. Unpause the AI so they can hit me and I can get me buffs. Honestly, I think that the gaze is probably the most worth building. Okay, the gaze and the tomb finger. I don't know which one would be number one and two, not from a mathematical perspective, but more from a subjective perspective. But these two are really worth building. By the way, link in the cards right now for a full and detailed tutorial on the tomb finger primary. Mirage's free ability for a fantastic damage increase as well as her ever so lovely clones. Now <laughs> let's see what we. Where'd they go? You guys scared of me? should not be scared of me. Of course, I'm gonna be able to absolutely delete everything that stands in my path. And this is corrosive. Again, it's not Viral Mumu in this case. It's just pure, raw, unadulterated damage straight out of France. Vive la France and all that good stuff. As for a conclusion, this is a super solid primary weapon. I believe that this one should be in everybody's arsenal. It's up to you to decide what's more important. You want more damage or do you want more range? Honestly... <sighs> It's, it's a hard choice. I went for damage, but you might go for range. Remember, brash or tremor, depending on your own preferences. As always, my name is Blunazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys got any particular weapon idea reviews in mind, or maybe even Warframe reviews in mind. Now, I can't exactly promise you that it'll be done within a week or even next time because these things can uh, take a while to make, but what I can promise you is that I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye. And for that, just a couple of free shots. Free shots. <laughs> What are shunts anyway? <laughs> oh boy, I'm never gonna get this done. <laughs> shunts. <laughs>